the boys and girls both? Yes. Yes, like, everybody. Like two rows, maybe? I mean, it's a competition. Yeah, I mean, two so rows. If you want, we can make the front the girls and the back the boys. Yeah, just, just have a that's more comfortable. Just make me sure. Okay. So we'll have the girls in the front and the boys in the front. I really don't. No, I wouldn't even <laughs> that. Okay. All right. So, um, one thing, dress code. Make sure that you don't okay. wear a hat so like Charles. Or don't wear paper, sunglasses like columns. Charles. One so that's for a big no-no. And, and no jeans. Okay. No yeah, jeans. Yeah, okay. Better to have longer sleeves and shirts than shorter sleeves. Because it's warmer. Okay. So, for the boys, they wear suits. Yeah? For the girls, Pants suit, a via, yeah, a suit will be an actual suit. You can come, you can wear a dress shirt and yes. dress pants. That's fine too. You don't have to wear like a suit, suit, but look nice. Yeah? Wear your hair nice as well. Maybe shave up a bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, look sharp. And plagiarism. So I need all of your speeches in uh, by Sunday, okay? I need to check to see if you have plagiarized or anything. Mm -hmm. As in the script? Yes, the script for the prepared speeches. For the impromptu, you can't really cheat. You're here, you're raw, they're watching, okay? Um, a few other things. I have the rubrics here. Oh, here it is. So, let me show you the rubrics. Okay. So for the planned speeches or the prepared speeches, you can see here there are seven different categories. Yeah? So you'll be judged on the title. So is it clearly indicative of a speech, content, and the message? So it should be catchy, right? Okay? And the introduction. Does it set a good tone? Okay? Is it informative? Is it creative? Is there an attention getter? Okay. Any questions there? Yes. Yeah. The thing is, we don't want to send it. Okay. So if you want, take notes now. You can take notes. Can I take a picture? But don't circulate it. The only reason we don't want it electronically out is because we don't want you to circulate it. Okay. Yeah. And the prepared this morning. Uh, five. Five minutes. Ten. So when they reach one minute, you rest this. We've got one more. Two eighty. Uh, sorry, one minute, one minute and a half, and two minutes, and then if they exceeded, we will like to score it. So he's not here yet. I will take. What's the timing? You take your time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 You will be raising the okay, okay. So the discussion points too, you should make sure it's clearly developed, right? There's creative narrative for support. And the mechanics, we're judging you based on voice projection, stress, intonation, speed, and delivery. Attitude and body language, so don't make crazy movements. Okay. Don't be too aggressive. Yes. No, don't no. scare the audience, one, right? And well-selected topic. So make sure the topic is selected. You don't drift off onto a different topic. Keep up with the topic. And then there should be a strong takeaway message here, number six. Okay? And number seven, we're looking at pronunciation, intonation, and clear and easy to understand. So we're looking at all of these. And also timing. So if you go over five minutes and 30 seconds, you are disqualified and you will not know. We will not tell you, okay? So you need to make sure that you prepare and you plan and you know time. Time yourself, practice, okay? So for the prepared speeches, it's five minutes and for the impromptu speeches, it's two minutes, okay? So 30 seconds, you have a window of time, but if you meet that 30 seconds, you're out, okay? So five seconds, 10 seconds over, not a problem. Any questions? No? So this is for the prepared speech, but let me show you the impromptu speech as well. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah. 
So it's very similar, right? You're based on similar topics, uh, so similar points. So here, let's see the premise. Does the speaker offer a premise that is meaningful as a lead-in? So this would be important for you in the beginning to make sure it's very clear what you're talking about. Don't drift off into a different topic completely, okay? Uh, do you wanna look at the bottom? Can you see here? I think this is the full page. Any questions, concerns, comments? Okay, move on. And also there's a sheet with your names. There's a sheet with your names. Please check if the title is correct the spelling of your names are correct and your ID numbers are correct. Your certificates will be based on the spelling here and also your speech topics will be on a program. And next, we're gonna go and draw names to determine the order for the actual contest day. So I need all 10 contestants to be here. Otherwise, if the contestant is not here, when Miss Melissa draws the names, the remaining number will go to the person not here. No, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just give the yeah, just clarifying something. Uh, like Miss Melissa said, uh, first of all, good morning to everyone. <laughs> good morning. My name is Peter Carrigianis. <laughs> I'm related to public speaking. You're famous. Okay. All right. Uh, now, we're going to draw numbers today. Oh, actually, names. You're going to draw names. Okay, names. Are we going to put a number to the name? I was thinking of just. Uh, uh, I have the name. Okay. All right. So you got to draw a name and. Uh, okay. So anyway, Miss Melissa, I guess, has figured it out. But the person not here, are we going to draw it like the person in, who's absent now will get the final number? They will get the name that's wrong. Okay. All right. Or they can go there at the end. Maybe uh, it's, 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 it's whatever. Fair, yeah? What's your call? Does in any, any case. Does so, I don't think we should open a choice here. I feel that choices are not right right now. I think that uh, we should go by default. Of, and uh, So we're going to draw numbers. The number will determine the sequence that you will prepare your, you will do your, in, uh, your speech and the impromptu. Okay, so, and that number will determine the number that gets selected for the topic, for the impromptu speech topic. So let's say today you're six. I've already prepared impromptu speech topic number six. I don't know who that person is, but because you're number six, you now have linked up to impromptu speech topic number six. You see what I'm saying? Okay, That's, that makes it fair, because I don't know the numbers yet. I've just chosen 10 topics. So by chance, your name will be associated with the impromptu speech topic. So anyways, uh, moving on, so judges will be four in total, yeah? So we'll have me, Mr. Peter, Ms. Agatha, and then we'll have uh, Dr. Janet, right, from, uh, she's the Dean of Libraries, so she'll be coming here to judge you as well, okay? Also, you will have an audience vote. So all your friends, people who come to support you, they'll have a say in, in actually helping you out, so it'll be valuable to have them in the audience. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how does the voting system work? So the voting system is, you saw the rubric, so you'll be judged based on that, okay? And that, the judge's score will be out of 80%, and 20% from the audience. Yeah, as in physically, what will they have? They will have a voting system with your names, and they'll just choose your name. Okay. That's it, favorite person. Like yep. Twenty percent, though. But eighty percent, if they're in here, they'll vote. Okay. All right. All right. So next, <clears throat> make sure you stick to the topic. Make sure you stick to the topic, and do not mention sex, politics, or religion. Okay. So none of these are allowed. Okay. And then timekeepers we have here. Abdullahi and then Ms. Asma from the Speaking Center. So you can say hi to them. <laughs> They'll be sitting here, okay? And uh, they will be keeping the time. So Abdullahi, can you raise the time cards? So he will be holding up three minutes after three minutes has passed, okay?
okay? Four minutes yellow after four minutes have passed, and then red for five minutes. And then you have 30 seconds. Okay, any questions? Can I just jump in? So no one's going to signal you if you have gone beyond the required time. In other words, no one's going to say to you, stop. But we will be recording the time and documenting the time. So anyone who exceeds the time limit will be disqualified default. Is that clear? It's your responsibility to watch the timer if you feel it's necessary. If you've prepared well enough, you probably don't need to look at the timer because you know how much time you take in your rehearsals. I think Ms. Melissa had mentioned that. Thank yeah, you. So if you've prepared well, yep, go after ahead. You, after you. No, after you. Please, please, after you. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, if you've prepared well, then you'll keep the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also, even for the impromptu, if you keep practicing you know, at home, you'll start to get a feeling of how many minutes, two minutes has been. Mm -hmm. So you'll get a feeling. Okay. For at least 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. So just... Just to clear things with myself. Sure. So when you pull, they pull out this card, yes. this is does it mean one minute has passed? Yes. Or does it mean one yes. minute yes. is remaining? Yes. Right. What you just first said, let's not go on to what you don't mean. So I one minute has passed. I will correct you, what you just said. Next question. One minute has passed. Next question. Finished. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right. So um, also there's a name, like a name sheet being passed around with your speech titles. If it's typed out wrong, please this change is it. Speech. And we don't want the same oh, title yeah. twice. And this is important. So make your title unique. Okay, change it around. And that's it. I think we kind of went past the timing that we should be going through. So, oh yes, and one more thing. On Thursday, next week, there will be a brunch. It'll be fun. You can just, you know, commence and talk about what you've gone through, you know trying to tell their shoulders or like laugh or whatever, you know. So, so is it 12 o'clock, right? 10.30. 10.30? Yes. 10.30 what? Where? The brunch. 10.30 brunch? Yes. The following day? Thursday. Thursday. Where? Yeah. I think it's like 10.30 maybe. 21st. I think it'll be over there. Yeah. Yes, I'm feeling here. It'll be on the first floor. On the first floor. Yes. I've sent a... Yeah, I've sent it twice already, but I'll send it again. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you. I'll send it again. And also at 10:30 uh, a.m., uh, you should be here for the day of the contest. 10:30, 10:45 latest, because 11:15 we will begin, and the speed, uh, the spelling bee will, uh, you know, continue after that. So we have to make sure we finish on time. So we'll set the timer today, and I have calculated about nine minutes per. Okay, so which means if we say anything up front, we have to calculate that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. About the brunch, I sent you an email regarding that. Okay. Can we talk about that sure. personally? Sure. Okay. Thank you. So we need to start now. So we'll draw the names and decide which order it will go for and the day of the contest. Can you put down the, the number next to the name of the okay. contestant? So okay. I'll say the So name. when you hear the name, you put a number next so to the draw. name. You ready? Yes. Okay. If you want someone to come out and draw from there, just in case you think Miss Melissa's fingers are biased, <laughs> you may have biased fingers. Peter, you do it. I'll take the we trust in you. Drum roll, please. Who's the first person? <laughs> okay, it is Marian Navi. Oh. You're number one. You're number one. No pressure. Alright, number two. Salah Sheikh Mohammed. <laughs> Thank you, Abdullah. Third person is Madam M H Abdullah. You all right there, Abdullah? Yep, you you're number keeping four? a track. That's yep. very important what you're doing now. Very important. Number five, Ahmed Ben Crowda. Ahmed is one, one, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. Five. This is, four, this is right? four. Oh, sorry, four. Four, sorry, yes. Four. And then number five. Number five, huh? Can you say the name? Charles. Yes. Charles here. Number five. Imprint the number in your mind, huh? Number five. Two. 
I've been locking you. You're writing this down, right? Or putting in order. Nuru, number six. Nuru. Uh, Jingru, Ma, number seven. Okay, Omar, number eight. And Abdulaziz Nafis, number nine. So last <laughs> Wow, what a if, what an irony. If it's correct. <laughs> last oh, person know. is Joani. Wow. You got that, right? Yep, yep. So you important. know your order, and uh, that would be the order in the program. But today we will start with Mariam because she has to leave, and then yeah. followed by. Uh, so, Mr. is there anyone here who doesn't remember their number? Anyone here not remember their number? That is the sequence that you come up on stage. Okay, that is the sequence that you will face the audience for the impromptu speech topic as well. And the impromptu is somewhere here. Yeah. This is a. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, the there's, a, there's a paper like this if you can find it somewhere here. Okay. All right, so shall we begin? Yeah, okay. All right, let's so, begin then. So we're going to do impromptu and we're going to do prepared and impromptu? Do do you want to the do way it? that we did it, uh, that we're going to be doing it. Okay. Yep. So I need, I need 10 impromptu uh -huh. speech topics, right? Yeah, it's here. It's there. Okay. So it's here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's all organized. All right, Melissa. <laughs> okay. So here we go. So we're going to start. So the first person is Mariam, correct? So yep, Mariam, yes. Mariam. All right, so I'll come up here. There will be an MC. She wasn't able to make it today, but she'll introduce the speech topic, I mean the speech contest, let, let and me, then... Let me do, pretend I'm the MC just so we can... Who's, who's coming up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where is she? Yeah, no, she's got a topic here as well. Okay, all right. So, so this is what I got a microphone in the back Okay, this is what would happen. Pretend Mariam is not. Okay, pretend they call out Mariam. Mariam comes up. Speaker, they will say speaker number. What's your number? One. Speaker number one. Okay, here's how it goes. This is will be the same order as final. Yes. So this is prepared speech, yes? Right. I'm not the MC, I'm just pretending to be the MC. Okay, are we ready? Yep. Okay, uh, timer, are you ready? Yep. Okay. So there'll, there should be two people there. There should be two people there, one person recording the time with a pen on paper and the other person holding up the cards. And actually one is checking the other, so there's no misunderstanding, because okay. time is important. You could disqualify yourself in one second. Think about it like, all right? So we want to be as fair as possible. Time, okay? So in reality, your speaker number one, right? Okay, all right, are we ready? Okay, timer, are you ready? Okay, audience? Yes. All right. Speaker number one, Mariam Naveed. Can grades measure intelligence? Can grades measure intelligence? Mariam Naveed. Can grades measure intelligence? First, let's define what intelligence is. It means to think in an abstract manner which is determined by some objective criteria, like tests or quizzes. IQ, on the other hand, is a score resulting from a set of standardized tests, specially crafted in order to measure a person's cognitive abilities, as per his age. So as we can see, a person's smartness is always measured in a quantitative manner, not in a qualitative manner. So ladies and gentlemen, tests, in my opinion, are erroneous representations of a person's intelligence. 
It's analogous to judging the maturity of a person by, by his age, which is just a number. I have an amazing story to share with you. I studied in an Indian school, which was situated in Dubai, and of course Arabic courses are a requirement there. The funny part is that I always used to manage to get full scores in my Arabic exams. And I'm not even an Arab, I don't speak Arabic. How's that possible? I just used to memorize the textbook. Certainly the same questions would be there in the exam paper. I just had to jot down whatever I worked, you know, whatever I memorized so hard, and bingo, full marks. But here's a question to ponder about. Would that be an objective evaluation of my intelligence in the Arabic course? No. So this is just one instance where I managed to get good marks just by memorization. But there are many instances where students may not get the marks as desired. Some students tend to have good days, some may have bad days, some may have sick days, some may have learning disabilities, some may have limited attention span in classes, some may have test anxieties, some may be masterminds in chemistry, some may be dunderheads at math. So you see, everyone differs in their strengths and weaknesses. Einstein failed at math, Richard Branson and Steve Jobs suffered significantly in their formal education. But that does not and will never mean that they weren't smart. In fact, it's the opposite. So basically, we do our exams, we get the grades, and that's it. We end up forgetting what we've learned. And this vicious cycle repeats every semester. So grades, in my opinion, is all these written exams, quizzes, GPA, are pretty much useless in the end, unless we apply what we've learned. So while I was preparing for my speech, I realized there are so many skills I need to hone, I need to improve on. Skills in writing down my ideas, skills in organizing my ideas, and skills in conveying my ideas. You know, my strategic way of walking, <laughs> my eye contact, my body language, my confidence level. There are so many things we need to be aware of while we are giving speech. So this idea popped up in my head. Instead of these written exams and quizzes that we do, why don't we conduct oral tests? It would be like hitting two birds with one stone. The student could improve on her skills. At the same time, the professor would be saved from the immense time of correcting this huge pile of papers. Very few moments from now, I'm gonna give my impromptu speech that too can be used to evaluate the skills and abilities of a student to perform under pressure. And the grading system could be simply A, B, C, D, alphabetical style, instead of you know, these numbers so that the students are saved from the trauma of, you know, like they get petrified when they see marks or numbers. Of course, if that happens. So what I mean to say is that grades are important, they are necessary, but the issue arises when they are used to measure a person's intelligence because numbers cannot determine what a person can do or what a person cannot do. So as long as you're humble, inquisitive, committed, and ambitious towards a course you enjoy doing, any subject, to me, that's far more accurate measure of intelligence than any other exams or tests. Thank you. Speaker number one, you have 10 impromptu speech topics from which you will select one. Which number will you select? Speaker number one, your impromptu speech topic is, does money make the world go round? Speaker number one, your impromptu speech topic is, does money make the world go
go around. The floor is yours. Does money make the world go round? What is money? It's a paper, isn't it? But that piece of paper has so much value. Everyone, you see, this world operates on money. Money is actually something which is man-made. I know one of my friends, um, she was like, she wanted to take part in this contest because the cash price is huge. She's like, Mariam, join me. It's a group work, and uh, I just have you just have to win this. We're going to be rich in few moments once we once we win. The competition was about some research project to do, and we would submit that work. And if we win, the cash prize would be huge. So you see, the intentions of people change. She was not applying for the competition because of you know showing her creativity or innovative level, but it was because she wanted to win the cash price. It's true money can buy happiness, but not everything. It's just materialistic happiness. We can buy a lot of things from money. Mobile phones, iPads, uh, makeup, cosmetics, whatever our requirements may be. But money cannot buy love. It cannot buy true friends. There are so many things that money cannot make the world go round. Money has its limitations. And um, we just should know that we should keep in our minds that money is not everything. Love from family, friendliness, happiness, faithfulness, trustfulness, money cannot buy that. So money cannot make the world go round exactly. Speaker number two. No feedback. Straight through. Straight through today. The world of feedback has shut. Number two is Mr. Fala. Yeah, that's me. I just have to Speaker take my number two. Yeah. Let me help you. Uh, in, in this case, I just want to say something. We, we, we have uh, two minutes for the judges to complete their ballots. Okay, so you would have two minutes to get ready, Speaker number two. Okay, so the judges have to complete their ballots, and then. So why don't we do this? Speak, okay, then speaker number two would come up. Is that clear for everyone? So there's a two, like one or two minutes for the judges to complete their ballots. No, no. The chairs won't be here. No, nothing will be here. Oh, yeah, you have to go. Yeah, he has to go. He's going, right? No, no, no. No, no, no. I live in LA. Excuse me. It's not for you to decide. It's for us to decide. Come on. Decide it for you. What about the... Okay, yeah, I'll show you. What about the props? You're Mr. Nafsis, right? Yes? Yes. Okay, one minute. He won't steal it. I hope so. That's only in one side. No, that's okay. Okay. All right. Speaker number two. If this were speaker number two, it's not. But he is. Okay. All right. Speaker number two, Abdulaziz Nafsis. So now he is number two, right? Yeah, Abdulaziz. I just want to ask something. Actually, I'm asking it. Um, we we have to decide if the just today. contestant is just coming today. up from this side, not Ms. Melissa. Excuse me. Yes. We have to decide if the contestants are sitting there. And they're going to come up this side. Yeah, right? we already decided. So, yeah, but that would that would disorient me because I need to be sitting somewhere, and it's a little bit um, disjunctive. Um, so, it, do you prefer it, it on the right yeah, side? Because it, yeah, it's more orthodox if they come up that way rather than it's okay. that way. All right. You me, right? Yeah, then Dalal is good with it. We're good with it. So, yeah. So, okay. yeah. so if they sit there, it's actually easier because this way I'm here, and then there's not this, you know, yeah, yeah. strange yeah. kind of movement. So we're switching okay. to the right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, when you finish your speech, you come down from the same spot so you don't disturb oh, anybody else. You, you come in from the same place and go yeah. up from the same place. Yeah, we don't want a lot of cross traffic. 
you on the day of the competition, you sit there, you get up from there, you come up on stage, you go back down over there. And handshake, right? With yes, the MC. Yes, 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 with the announcer. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to shake hands, just let us know. Yeah, if you don't want to shake hands with me, you just do this. Okay, or whatever you want to do. The MC would be a lady, right? Namaste. Yeah, it'll be a lady. <laughs> <laughs> namaste. Oh. Oh. Namaste. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you'll let me know. I'll read your body language. I read body language. Okay. All right. Okay, questions. Any other questions? Shall we move on? Okay, so speaker. Speaker number two. Abdulaziz Nafsis. Change your thought. Change your change the world. Abdulaziz Nafsis. Change your thought. Change the world. That year, I planned to get the highest mark in the class, so I can, I can, I can get to this university, the UAE University. It was my dream, so I really planned it. I was working to get the highest score in my class. That year, the grades came, the first semester, of course. And guess what happened? I was very shocked. I got one of the lowest marks in my class. I was very disappointed. I was broken. I never, I can never make it. I can never come to, to this university. I can never achieve my dream. And then I, I, I started being miserable. Life is going very worse for me. I decided this is not my dream. This is not really what I'm thinking. I have to change my life. And then I started replan again. Then what I've what I, what I done is like, after a few years, I'm here in this university. I achieved my goal. Why? How did I achieve my goal? I planned very well, and then I get very positive about my life. I was very energized. I get very productive, proactive. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to change yourself, firstly you have to change your thoughts. Why? Because your thoughts are your energies, your fuels, your motivation. It says like, if you want to change the world, start to change your thoughts. We need to adapt change around us. Everything are changing. The environment, technologies. So we need to adapt this change by changing our thoughts. He said, if everyone sweeps his own door, the whole world is going to be clean. And I say, if everyone changes himself, the world is going to be changed. Dear, dear guests, and contestants. It's your choice to get change. So, start to think from now to change yourself before you start to change the world. Thank you. Speaker number two. We give one or two minutes for the judges to fill out the ballots. So you I'll just relax. But speaker number two, your impromptu speech topics from one to ten minus seven. Which one would you want? Just tell me a number. Six. Speaker number two, your impromptu speech topic is 
my biggest concern for the future is speaker number two your impromptu speech topic is my biggest concern for the future is again dear contestants and dear judges my biggest concern in my life is not to achieve my dreams we all have dreams and we are looking for to achieve those dreams guess what you will get disappointed whenever you didn't achieve a single goal in your life i have many goals i have dreams and i'm really looking to achieve those dreams and that goals i'm really working hard i know that and you all are going to achieve your dreams if you are working goal you are working on your goal so the concern is it's about a negative thing. If you are not working on your goals, you feel negative. If you are feeling neg negative, you will not going to achieve anything in your in your life. So the concern, let's uh, let us not not focus on our concern, and instead let's focus on the, the thing that we can achieve. If we can achieve anything in life, there will be no concern. The concern comes from the anxiety. The anxiety can become from uh, not planning, not working on our goals. If you really planning, there will be no concern in our life. It's very important to be confident about what we are doing. Dear judges and contestants, are you really confident about what you are doing? Then you will not have any concern about your future. Thank you. The next person is Mr. Fala. We'll have one minute for the judges to complete their ballots. Speaker number point. three, get ready. Now, I'm thinking something else. Let me think it out loud so it's all out there in the world of transparency. I'm not going to number the uh, impromptu speech topics. I'm going to put them in a little hat and just ask each contestant to draw from the hat on the yeah. yeah, I have, the, I have yeah, that there. Yeah, a little hat. Or, yeah. You can use that if you want. Yeah, yeah. I think that's better. That's my little Halloween cat. <laughs> it's my trick-or-treat bag. <laughs> now, if you have any special needs, when I mean special needs, I mean if you have any um, um, props, yeah, special needs props, that you're going to use, a hat, glasses, a certificate, a trophy, you need to tell the MC in advance so the MC can prepare it for you. Okay? So you... you you tell the MC, I'd like my prop over there, or I'd like my prop in the back of the chair, or I like my prop wherever you want your prop, so they can prepare it for you, so there's no distraction. You follow me, right? Okay. Because somebody else may come up with a prop as well. All right. As expected. We take the timing exactly when this All right. starts. So you're doing are we ready for speaker number three? Right. Judges, are we ready? Timer, are you ready? Thank you. All right, speaker number three. Falah Sheikh Muhammad. Impossible to I am possible. Speaker number three. Falah Sheikh Muhammad. Impossible to I am possible. After crossing the finish line of a hundred meter running race, which I lost to, my best friend who won told me something that I would never forget for the rest of my life. Falah, you don't deserve this. You're a loser. Those were the words that broke the camel's back. Years went by, and I never had the audacity to even think about attempting something new. 
because his words would echo in my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever felt like something was impossible? Have you ever felt like a loser? Two years later, I eventually developed a, what's the worst that could happen out of you? And so I decided to participate in a UAE inter-university athletic race. So I started to train. Six weeks of sweat, pain, and determination. Soon it was my big day. I was all excited. However, it was not all sunshine and rainbows. I remember the night before the event, I fell victim to a wild fever. And the next morning, my mom goes, Farah, you don't have to do this. And in my mind, all I thought was six weeks of training, once in a year opportunity. And so I said, Mom, I have to go. So my emotional mom turns to my dad and goes, Congrats, your son has gone crazy. And crazy it was. But my mom knew how much that meant to me. And so she let me go to the studio. During one of the events, I remember I was running. And all when I thought it couldn't get any worse, I injured my ankle. Lights out, I fell. And then the nurse who bandaged me told, Salah, with that injury, it's impossible to run the race. You need at least three weeks of rest. Do you understand? Now, I didn't want to say to him yes or no. So guess what I did? I gave him the universal Indian headship. <laughs> okay, is that a yes or a no? <laughs> the next thing I hear is announcement for high jump. And so I picked myself up and started limping towards the event. Ladies and gentlemen, in this race of life, you will have challenges thrown at you. You will have obstacles in your life. But it's not about how many times you fall. It's about that one time when you almost give up. Pick yourself up. Move towards your goal. I remember I rushed back home that night, went to the kitchen, looked at my mom and said, Mom, guess what? Your crazy son did something even crazier. I looked at my mom and she was weeping, tears of joy. That was one of the most beautiful moments of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to think what your challenges in life are. What you thought was impossible. And then I want you to think of this. Because this was impossible. And I want you to turn your impossibles into I impossible. Impossible to? Impossible. impossible. Thank you. Four minutes, 40 seconds. One minute of silence while the judges fill out their ballots. Speaker number three, your topic is, art is essential to life. Speaker number three, your topic is, art is essential to life.
art is essential to life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to picture your wildest imaginations and how far you can go with your imaginations. How would you define art? We all have a definitions, don't we? The art of not giving up is my definition of art. Often in life, we come across challenges and obstacles that we don't really feel like we can. Imagine that final exam you studied all night. It was that one moment you felt like almost giving up. Imagine that workout goal you wanted to achieve. But you almost gave up just because you thought it was too tiring. Ladies and gentlemen, the art of not giving up. I learned it from my four-year-old nephew. Now, his name was Ahmed. Now, Ahmed was a very energetic man. And when I look at him, whenever I have a conversation with him, I always think about how he used to be very excited about things. He didn't used to care about how he looked. He, he spread his energy throughout. And even though every time he fell on the ground, he wouldn't care that he was hurt. All he would care was how I'm going to play or how I'm going to enjoy myself. So he taught me the art of not giving up. How do you define art? Oh, this way, this way, this way. Yeah, this way. Yep. I'm just thinking on that topic. The art of lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist. I'm a liar. <laughs> Let me do some lying for you. Lying art. <laughs> okay. So a minute for the judges. A minute of silence while the judges fill out their ballots. And actually, Melissa, mm -hmm. I feel that I shouldn't be up here on the day of the competition. I need to be down there. Sure. Can we, can we find someone to... We will. To do, we yeah. will. Because it, my perspective is very limited here. Yeah. Know? I How think can so. I judge someone? But you're a great announcer. <laughs> Can't no, deny that. You don't want me to be a judge, right? <laughs> no, I want you to be the judge, of course. Okay. All right. Shall we move to speaker number four? Who is speaker number four? Maram. Speaker number four Maram. is okay. Maram. MH. Okay, speaker number four, please do not disappear on the day of the contest <laughs> because it will all work against you. You will bias the judges. Madam, you have to. <laughs> you speaker have number to. four. Where is speaker number four? Maram, right there. Maram. Oh, Maram. Okay. So, so, no, Maram is next. Maybe they change it after Abdulaziz. Yes. Because Abdulaziz left, right? From so, oh, okay. so, we're so we're just going next. like we did Mariam and then okay. uh, Abdulaziz first. So and so we're going back to one, two, three. Okay. You get it? Yeah. Okay. Right. Do you have to go? Uh, no, no. Okay. So, uh, Madam, I know like some of us are, you don't, we don't feel prepared or, you know, we feel nervous, but just do the best that you can. Okay. Can I go first? Before? <laughs> no, I want to go now. Okay. Please yeah. do. No, just, just go. Whatever Miss Melissa says. Okay. Just go for it. <laughs> I'm not okay, testing you. We're going in order. Here. We're going Please. in order. Okay. Speaker number four, Madam M. Abdullah, when your thoughts are your enemy. Speaker number four, Maram M. Abdallah, when your thoughts are your enemy. I'm sure as individuals, we all have those moments where we thought to ourselves, I can't, I'm not good enough, and who are we kidding here? For a big part of my life, those 
thoughts were not only moments, they were my everyday life. I could never think big of myself. I mean, why would I? I'm ordinary. Those negativ uh, that negativity limited my mind. The fear, the constant hesitation ruined my self-esteem. It was like living in a reoccurring nightmare. Can you imagine this? Standing at the same point in life, too afraid to move forward or even progress. I knew I wanted to do something. I knew I didn't want to stay like this. One day, when I was 17 years old, one of my teachers said something that will stay at the back of my head as a confidence booster. We were asked to compose a story. And I remember writing my heart out. I always had an act for, I always had an act for imagining things. Fast forward a couple of days, she came back with the papers. She was particularly impressed by a story. She thought it was beautifully put together and she even read it to all the teachers that were, that were teaching the same subject. I instantly discarded her words. I thought, how could she be talking about me? I was in a class full of A students and three of them were writers by hobby. She turned around and looked at me and said, Madam, do you watch a lot of movies? And the whole class laughed. I was really embarrassed. She said, you took the highest mark. And I want you now to get up and stand here and read your story to all of the students now. That was my first encounter with a something that was against the odds. Now, after finishing high school, my dad wanted me to major in engineering. And to convince me with something that I didn't even think of, he would say, I know you have the ability to do whatever you think you want to major in, but why not challenge yourself? And he was right. Ch uh, majoring in architecture and engineering was an everyday struggle. I still struggle with this and challenge myself every day. But it was time to stop self-destructing. I started with baby steps. I kept reminding myself daily of the things that I'm good at and actually have approval. For example, a certificate of a competition that I have won. I would read uh, stories of very successful people. Those people that even though their circumstances were against them, they actually made it. So what excuses do I have not to be able to do what I want to do. Uh, challenging myself daily, even with the simplest things, helped me in my journey, journey to self-growth. I decided I wanted to face my fears and doubts head on. And guess what? Everything that I thought was impossible actually was possible. And finally, I think that the best trick that worked for me was the same way I let those fears and doubts restrain my mind, I could redirect them and use them and tell myself daily that I can do this. So my brain now is developing this uh, belief that it can do it. So I can walk the walk and talk the talk of a person that is capable. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope my speech confirmed to you that you're not alone in this your fear of not your fear you, you should not settle for a faith that you're not happy with there's a saying that goes if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing it's stupid what i'm trying to say here is we're all good at doing something better than others so remember Pick yourself up and use that negativity, negativity as a fuel for your determination to achieve your dreams and goals and what you're destined to. Thank you. Okay, one minute for the judges, one minute of silence. All the judges mark their ballots. If there were judges here, we'd give them a minute of silence.
4 minutes 56 seconds. Speaker number four, your topic is Plants Have Feelings Too. Speaker number four, your topic is Plants Have Feelings Too. Does plant or anything that is living beside humans have feelings? Some would argue no, but there's a lot of proofs that goes for that statement that is true. Plants and everything else beside humans do have feelings. I remember reading a story, I'm not sure if it was a fiction, but I like to believe that it's true. There's someone that uh, planted a tree and that a tree grew to be big and huge. And when asked, how did you achieve that? Why does your plant look so alive, big and huge against all the circumstances? And that person would answer, I talk to this plant daily. I wake up and say, good morning, how are you doing? And I would pet it like an animal, like my pet. It's a living thing. I should take care of it. So I think for my perception, what my perception is that it responded to my talks daily. So it grew this beautifully. And the end of that story is actually sad. I don't like uh, sad endings. But it said, uh, when I read the story, that once that person died, uh, it, that plant did not have any person to talk to. So finally, it died like the person that took care of it. So does plant have feelings? Yes, of course. Thank you. So you wait on stage until the person comes up again to allow you to get off stage. Okay. That's right. Okay, speaker number five. Speaker number five is Ahmed. Yeah, it's, ah, it's Ahmed. 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 I, I am speaker number five. No, no, no. Uh, we, yes, I swear I am. I know, you're speaker, <laughs> I know you're speaker number five, but we've been taking... Oh, because of the switch and everything? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Okay, no okay, go, go, go off stage. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Okay. No worries. I will call the names, yeah? So Ahmed, Charles, Nuru, Jingruma, Omir. So Ahmed will go, and then after that, Charles, and then after that, Nuru. Okay, Ahmed, you're next. So speaker number five. And who's six? Can maybe you ask me? Oh, they know I'll tell them each, each time. <laughs> okay. All right. Speaker number five, Ahmed Ben Krauda. Intrinsic values cannot be measured by extrinsic values. No. It's my turn. no. <laughs> okay, wait, let me clarify. <laughs> okay, so we let Mariam go first. She's actually number four. Uh, no, not number four. Mariam is on the list. No, no, she's not one. I have fear Oh, yes, she is one. Okay. So on the left, Mariam is number one, and then number two is Fala, and then number three. So you know your numbers, but we let one person go ahead of everybody else, so now the numbers have gone kind of. So we are going back from the order, right? Yes, yeah, now we're back on the order. Yeah. So. Yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's handwritten here. Yeah. Yeah, the okay. correction was made, and it was right next so to the So this is the order. order. Yeah, that's okay. No. Just because it was handwritten. Ah, okay, okay. Oh. Everything's clear? Okay. <laughs> uh, just uh, one other thing. When the contest, on the contest day, you will not have your phones with you. Uh, your phones should be off. And actually, 
there should be someone at the door reminding the people coming in to switch off their phones. Because you know it can be very disruptive and distracting to a speaker when a phone goes off. So I, it has to be very clear that anyone coming into this contest for the public speaking, phones should be off. Okay, not just for contestants, but for the audience as well. Yeah, can we have a sign outside the door that says? Yeah. So, Miss Melissa, if we could we'll possibly yeah. make that very evident to everyone. And by the way, I think I have to turn my phone off completely because I have it on silent, but no, it rings I'm, anyway. I'm not referring. So. I'm just saying in terms of the policies that. But I will turn it off. Yeah. Phones are off you on contest day. You can't talk to me during the, the competition. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, my phone is really broken. I don't know what's wrong with it. Don't distract yeah. the judges, please. I don't know what's wrong with it. All right. Judges ready? Yep. Time already? Okay. Speaker number four, Ahmed Ben Krauda, self-awareness. Speaker number four, Ahmed Ben Krauda, self-awareness. The quality of our life depends on the quality of our communication. And communication starts by how we communicate to ourselves. Words that shift me to the core. It all started with that question, how do I communicate to myself? How do I perceive myself from a third person perspective? And that question led to another question. Why do I perceive myself the way I do? That question led to another question, which is why do I perceive the way I do? And, and moments after that, questions started running into my mind like wolves going out for a hunt. One of the questions was why one of the questions was one of the questions was <laughs> You got it. You got it, you got it. Can I kinda of start all over again? One more time. On the day of the contest. Yeah, I know, I know. On the day, I just want to clarify this. <laughs> we'll stop we'll the time. No, okay. yes. no stop, hands stop. holding yes, stop reality the on the day of the contest. Right? When you drown, you drown alone. When you shine, you shine with the world. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, so make, uh, there's no issues today, but on the day of the contest, there's no, can I rewind and replay? You don't rewind life, you don't rewind the speech. El Ahmed, you got this. You got it, you got it, buddy. Appreciate it. The quality of your life depends on the quality of your communication. And the quality of your communication depends on how you communicate to yourself. It all started with that question of how do I communicate to myself? How do I perceive myself from a third person perspective? And that question led to an even deeper question, which is why do I perceive myself the way I do? After that question, questions started running into my mind like wolves going out for a hunt. One of the questions was, what is my purpose in this life? And to be honest, I didn't have an answer to that. Other questions were like, why do I love sports? And why do I always flunk my first quiz? And how did I manage to do a perfect backflip for the first time? I realized that I loved sports because it was competitive. And I always flunked my first quiz because I never felt the challenge of the first week's materials. And I did the perfect backflip on the first time because my friend did it in just a week. Now, viewing those three different factors from a different perspective or from a third perspective, I saw that I loved sports because I was competitive. I saw that there's a connection between those three factors and which is challenge, that I'm a challenge to the person. Realizing that I'm a challenge to the person. There are many other things that I realized about myself too, along the way. One was I love the color green and I love wearing jeans. And one was also that I'm a family-oriented person. 
It was a moment when I realized that I knew when I understood what my purpose in life was. I am a mechanical engineer who loves robotics. I am a challenge-driven person and I am a family-oriented person. I am a mechanical engineer who loves robotics. I am a challenge-driven person and I am a family-oriented person. I am a mechanical engineer who loves robotics meant machine. I am a person who was challenge driven meant design. And I'm a, I'm a person who loves family meant benefiting, benefiting humanity. That made me designing a machine that would benefit humanity. Self-awareness is that process of trying to understand your habits, your skills and thoughts and basically everything that makes you tick. It's about deciphering you, your positives, and your negatives. And trust me, once you know both of those, you're gonna reach goals that you never ever thought of. And it makes perfect sense for it to be the, an indispensable prerequisite to success because we can't run to our goals without realizing how our mind walks. Self-awareness is something that I found far beyond powerful. It has many other advantages and oblique advantages where it makes us better judges of ourselves. So we are not over judging ourselves or not judging ourselves at all. It makes us understand why do we do what we do. For example, if we understand why we love, we get a better understanding of what, what love is. Something that I want, an experience that I want to share about with you is that when I was writing this speech about self-awareness, I asked myself, what is self, why am I so into self-awareness? And I came to realize that I do love it because I love math. Math? Yes, you heard me right, it's math. Because math and self-awareness have this thing where both of them require you to go, require you to go deep down, scrutinize, and find the simplest details. It's like solving a puzzle or solving a maze. And I really like solving mazes, so it makes perfect sense. Ladies and gentlemen, self-awareness will lead you to, to your purpose in life. To, will lead you to discover who you are. Thank you very much. One minute of silence while the judges fill in their ballots. That's what will be said by the MC. Speaker number five, your topic is, if I were an animal, I'd be up. <laughs> Speaker number five, your topic is, if I were an animal, I'd be up. If I am to be an animal, aren't we animals already? Aren't humans animals? But honestly, if I am to be an animal, then I would probably choose to be a beaver. A beaver is known to be a hard-working hard animal. It's an animal that is willing to sacrifice for other animals. And I, found, and I find these characteristics deep down in me. I'm a person who puts family and friends over my, over my, my, my. I'm a person um, who puts others before him. So I think we all do resemble animals somehow. So what, what animal do you resemble? Thank you. Oh, this way, this way, this uh, way, this way. Yeah, this way on, the, on the real day. 
on the real day, one, one minute, Charles, please. Charles, one minute, please. One minute. Uh, on the on the real day, you come in and come out from here, and I just want to uh, mention to Miss Melissa, perhaps we need to put reserved cards here for the yeah, contestants. Yeah, they'll, they'll be reserved. The, the two rows. Yes. Now, just one thing. I know this is not a workshop uh, that I've been doing, but you know, you don't have to be serious on an impromptu speech topic. I mean, there was a great opportunity <laughs> there to turn that topic into a funny topic and really have some fun with it and your audience would have fun with it and it would be very successful. I mean, I don't want to go into how you could do that, but just put your imagination to use as far as, uh, you know, what animal you'd like to be. Because you know? I have a beaver, I don't know, beaver face, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, I, all right? So, you know, you don't have to be serious. If you can be humorous and get the audience to, to laugh, that's great. You're, you're, you're a great speaker. Okay, so let's go to our next speaker. Speaker number six, Charles, Charles Rivet. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We only have one person who went ahead, so it's, we are going down from there. So... There will be something we can put on this, right? Yes. Can I talk today without this? As you wish. And just pretend sure that I have one. Me. Excuse me? Make sure you're on your Yes. Don't worry. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Hello? Speaking one, two, three. Okay. So, speaker number six, Charles Rive. If there is no hard evidence of achievement, is it a real accomplishment? Speaker number six, Charles Rive. If there is no hard evidence of achievement, is it a real accomplishment? As a French exchange student, I should be so inclined as to start my, my speech by quoting Napoleon Bonaparte, the last emperor that ever ruled over France. He once said, that it is by wanting a medal that a soldier becomes a hero. Indeed, this shiny, colorful, unique piece of metal so proudly displayed on the chest of a soldier is the proof to the world that the man wearing it has done great deeds for his family, his country, and his friends. It is thus normal as human beings to feel a need for recognition. If I work harder than my neighbor, I should be promoted at work. We all know that one person on Facebook who, after going to the gym, flexes and takes pictures in the mirror, wanting the likes of his peers. We all feel that it would be highly unfair if our achievements were not recognized with hard evidence. Furthermore, by having a proof of our accomplishment, we show the whole world that we are not lying about achieving whatever we said we did. But as I was preparing my speech over the last two months, I thought it would be interesting and perhaps inspiring to randomly ask the question to UAU students. I would go around and say, tell me, Mohammed, if I, do not have, if I do not have hard evidence of an achievement, will it be considered a real accomplishment? Every single one of them had the same reaction. First, they looked at me and told me, Charles, what kind of question is that? Which I understand, it was totally out of the blue. But after a moment of silence, they told me, well, technically, no. If you do not have a proof, how do I know that you're not lying? And they're right. Nowadays, with the rise of social media, it has become way easier to claim and spread proofless achievements through tweets, snaps, statuses. But after a moment of silence, they continued. They continued by telling me, and yet, just something feels wrong. If I listen to my gut reaction, if I hear what the back of my head is telling me, I do not think the approval, the approval of other matters. Their undivided answer therefore had me thinking, despite logic, why are we all convinced that hard evidence is not what matters for an accomplishment to be real? The key lies in the perception of the accomplishment. Even the smallest unknown or unheard achievement can be an, a real accomplishment to anyone who dedicates his heart into realizing it. Let me explain that with one of my own examples. When I first came to UAU over three months ago, I decided to join the swim team. Now, I am not a good swimmer, and for more than 30 days, I was unable to swim 50 meters without taking a break. It was just too hard. I was not fit for it, my muscles were not ready, and my breath was just not following. And the, the coach was putting a lot of pressure on me. He was telling me, Charles, you have to swim these 50 meters. 
competitions are coming up. You have to be ready. This was feeling, so I was, I was getting annoyed. So one night, I put on my goggles, looked at myself in the mirror and said, tonight, Charles, even if you have to drown doing it, you will swim 100 meters. I walked right to the pool and I dived. I swam, I swam and I also drank way more, way more water than I should. But when my hand finally touched the wall after 100 meters straight, nobody was here to applaud. Nobody was here to congratulate me. I did not even set my phone on the side of the pool to record myself swimming. I had no proof. And yet it felt like I just conquered the world. As I was sitting here, legs hanging in the pool, gazing at the ripples I had made in the water coming out, I realized that these 100 meters, this small, unknown, unheard achievement in UAU was a real accomplishment to me because I dedicated my heart into realizing it. Therefore, what matters? Is it what other people ask you to prove? What defines a real accomplishment? Is it what other people ask you to prove with hard evidence? No, it is what you choose to believe to be a real accomplishment. And the only person you have to convince with hard evidence is yourself. No, I do not say that this is the universal answer to the question that was rose at the beginning of my speech, but it is my answer. And being here today talking in front of you is something I dedicated my heart to. Therefore, it is enough to be my real accomplishment. Thank you very much. Okay, one minute of silence while the judges fill out their ballots. One minute of silence while the judges fill out their ballots. Speaker number six, your topic is, to be grown up is a state of mind. Speaker number six, your topic is, to be grown up is a state of mind. We, in our lives, have at least at one point all heard the phrase, oh my God, you're such a kid. Oh my God, you're not mature enough. This phrase that people are trying to tell us makes us feel like even though we feel grown up, even though I might leave in an adult body, I am a kid in my head. This is also often used as an insult. Somebody telling you, you're not mature, you're a kid. It means you're not at, at their level. We have to take care of you. But let me ask you a, point, a question. Is it really an insult? Is being a kid in an adult body really a bad thing? Being a kid in an adult body is a state of mind in a way that it is something you choose to be. You choose to be by taking life not too seriously. I am here today talking in front of you. Am I shaking? Yes, a bit. But I'm also enjoying it. And what matters? Is it to have the final one, the final price, the final money? Or what matters? Is it to, in the end, enjoy being here, speaking in front of you, taking this competition as a game, playfulness, thinking as a kid? Therefore, as an adult today, speaking in front of you, I try to act as a kid. I try to put myself in the mind of a kid. As a conclusion, I do believe being a kid in your mind, in your head, is a state of mind, but I also am convinced that it is a positive thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Getting ready for speaker number seven. Ms. Nuru. One minute, well, one minute of silence while the judges complete their balance, please.
One minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots, please. Speaker number seven. Speaker number seven, Nuru Said Salim. Intrinsic values cannot be measured by extrinsic values. Speaker number seven, Nauru, Nauru, Nuru Said Salim. Intrinsic values cannot be measured by extrinsic values. Imagine this, you're in your accounting class, test results are being handed out. You hear your friends joyfully screaming, 96, 98. You smile, excited to see your results. The teacher hands you the paper, you turn it, only to see a big fat C. There's the dreaded moment where you feel like the whole world is collapsing where you feel like I'm the only one who failed in this class. So you start finding excuses for the failure to make yourself feel better. Oh, the teacher hates me, that's why. I got this question correct. I don't know why he marked me wrong. And all these other kind of excuses that we students come up with. Maybe you had a genuine reason for failing, like you were stuck at the hospital the night before the exam. Or maybe you just spent a little too much time watching Game of Thrones instead of studying. But all in all, at the end of the day, you will have to accept the failure and move on. Because it's normal. We've all got a bad grade at one point in our school lives. I should know. I've got plenty of them. I know how awful it feels failing an exam, especially after you have kept all your efforts in it and said it's so hard. I remember when I was taking my econometrics course. I swear, I walked my sweats off from day one in that course. But at the end, I still got a low grade. It felt like all my hard work had just gone to waste. I had lost all hopes in continuing to study. But then that night, my mother was like, the wisest of them all. She gave me the best advice I could ever give to her daughter. She told me, Nura, I know you got a bad grade and it sucks, but putting the grade elements aside, tell me how much you gained from this course. I thought about it and I was like, well, I learned a lot. And she told me, so what are you mourning for? You got something even better out of your hard work. You got knowledge. And isn't that the whole point of why you're going to the university? I remember staying up that night thinking, she's right. Yes, grades are important, but they're not everything. Life has so much more to offer. And I re until that, I still remember how much he scored in that course. But not in a bad way. I remember it as the downfall that taught me life's greatest lesson. That your intrinsic values cannot be measured by your extrinsic values. For me, it was great. For you, it might be the amount of wealth you have or the kind of job you have, or your social status, or your background, and all of these other kind of external factors that might be dragging you down, telling you that you're not good enough, telling you that everyone else is better than you. But all of these factors, they don't really matter because, being a, because human values cannot be dictated by an external factor. Being a good human, is all about how you treat each other, what kind of impact you make to each other.
In the good human is all about how we treat each other and what kind of impact we make to each other. So, ladies and gentlemen, before you drown your sadness in ice cream in an Netflix marathon <laughs> because you got a bad grade or you didn't get the pay rise that you expected, remember, always remember that what matters is inside and not outside. So never let extrinsic values define you. Thank you. One minute of silence, please, while the judges complete their ballots. One minute of silence, please, while the judges complete their ballots. Speaker number six, your topic is conservation is survival. Speaker number six, your topic is conservation is survival. One minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots, please. One minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots, please. May I call on stage speaker number seven. or sure bias towards the contestants. <laughs> I will disqualify in the history of public speaking. I will disqualify a judge. Oh, you won't. <laughs> I love all of my contestants. Now, now, now. After I pointed it out. I do. Cheers. All right. Exactly. All right. Exactly. All right. Just kidding. All right. Speaker number seven. Jingru Ma. 
I can or I can't. Speaker number seven, Jinru Ma. I can or I can't. Imagine telling yourself a hundred times I can each day rather than oh I can't. Maybe it's just a small thought to yourself, but it will give you a completely different result in your life. Now my question is, which one is better? I can or I can't. The way you think in your life will determine who you will become. Now let's see, there is a door in front of you. You don't know what is behind, but you can't wait to open that door because you think, oh, that must be the bright light and unlimited possibility. But after you open that door, you find, oh, it's darkness around you. That is what I thought, what I felt when I came alone for the university. People can't understand what I was saying because of my, because of my poor English. And I can't understand too. Because when they taught me in Arabic, I was like, yeah, exactly. I can understand. Okay? And in my first half of university, I was lost. I went to the wrong bus to the medical college and there's no back bus, no no bus to come back, to go back. Like I just cried. Like I said, no, it shouldn't be. Like this is my first day. Why shouldn't it be like this? I made a friend. <sighs> Go ahead, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, I, I can believe do it. in you. <laughs> Sorry, okay. take a deep breath. Hold it. Think of what's up here. Think of us as potatoes. Right. Think of what's in here and think that you have the whole auditorium to you. Okay. All right. And okay. then we're all on your side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just can, can, can I uh, begin? Yeah. Again? Reset. Okay, reset. Oh, sorry. Reset. No, no worries, no worries. Yeah, I can. I can. Relax. Girl. Relax. You're good. I can or I can't? <laughs> I can. <laughs> What's it going to be? I can or I can't? I can. What's it going to be? I can or I can't? I can. Okay, <laughs> yes, yes, I can. Okay. So, yeah. Come on, you're going to prove it to us right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got this. Imagine. Telling yourself a hundred times I can each day rather than oh I can't. It may just a small thought to yourself, but it will give you a completely different result in your life. My question is, which one is better? I can or I can't. The way you think in your life will determine who you will become. Imagine there is a door in front of you. You don't know what is behind. But you can't wait to open that door because you thought, oh, it must be the bright light and unlimited possibility. But after you open that, you found, oh, it's darkness around you. That I was felt in the beginning when I came to this university. People can't understand what I was saying because of my poor English. And I can't understand them too. Because when they taught me in Arabic, I was just like, oh, exactly. I can't understand. Yeah. I know what, what you mean. I was lost in the first day of my university. I went to the wrong bus to the medical college and there's no bus to go back. I just cried like, oh no, it should have been like this. This is my first day of my university. And I made a friend, but she lied to me. After it hurt me, then just pretending nothing happened. After that, I just can't trust people anymore. Like. The darkness just swallowed me. All I remember in my first semester is just hopeless and crying. I realized like I can't continue anymore. However, I began to tell myself, come on, it's fine. Life needs to move on. You can do it. Even you are at level zero. So what? Just begin with zero. The transformation of this thinking opened a new door for me. I passed by the speaking center and I really liked the way how peer tutors help the students with their English. I said ago that I want to work here. 
because I love meeting new people and I want to enhance my English at the same time. The end of my first semester, I organized a cultural event on my own to share the Chinese culture. Afterwards, I came up with a new idea. Why not I teach Chinese here to share this new language to more people? By now, I have been teaching Chinese and being an English tutor for one year. By the way, come to learn Chinese. <laughs> I began with I can't and kept telling myself, come on, you can. I realized that the word I can't just setting a limit to ourselves, to our life, which limits us from being a better person. And you are the only one who can break this limit. I try to attend as many events, activities as I can, because the more things I did, and the stronger I became. I don't afraid anymore. I can stand on this big stage to talk confidently to all of you, and I was trying to be better and better. In November 2016, I participated in the Challenge for Innovation competition. They gave us only one way to prepare the real business plan for your idea which is very intense and challenge week for everyone. There are more than 20 groups. But guess what? Our group won the competition. And to be honest, I never thought about that. And now it is a startup, which means we're doing the real business. Our startup is inventing a smart reading device to help the 285 million visual impaired in this world. It is a full size device which can convert any text into braille. I know, that's amazing. <laughs> now, I'm an entrepreneur. That means I might influence and help more than millions of people's life in this world. However, I did one thing wrong. I underestimated myself at the beginning. I thought I would hinder my group because I'm only the first year student. And what can I do? I'm not good enough. I can do this, I can do that. Like I'm putting a limit to myself. But at that time, the only thing I should do and the only thing I did is break that limit. Maybe you're a freshman just like I was. Maybe you're facing all kinds of challenges in your life which scares you, make me feel, oh, you can't, you can't do this. I'm here to encourage all of you to think positively and trust yourself. Break that limit and aim to go beyond the limit. Always remember, you are the only one who can break your limit. Thank you. One minute of silence, please, while the judges complete their ballots. One minute of silence, please, while the judges complete their ballots. Speaker number eight. Your topic is fashion victims I have known. <laughs> Speaker number eight. Your topic is fashion victims I have owned. Known. I have known. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone can tell me what's the meaning of fashion victims? Any of you? Maybe someone who is like obsessed with fashion. Like I want to wear Gucci. I want to wear that money. Okay, I have no. Someone I have no. Like victims to brand. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't start yet, right? Yeah, I didn't start. Okay. okay. Do you understand? Yeah, okay. Fashion. Like, what's the topic? But on the day of the contest, won't be able to ask any qualifications. Fashion victims, I have no. It's clear, but maybe not disappointing. It's from the, it's from the Toastmasters. It's there. You know what fashion victims are? Uh, yeah, like a whole lot of uh, love in wearing fashion, fashion like, like fashion victims, like victims means like, you know, oh my gosh, I have to have this, like, I have to have Gucci. This is my, this is my thing, like, she can't control it because of Okay. 
So fashion like tens I have ever known. What is fashion? Like everyone have their own fashion style, and the fashion like tens I have ever known. I think okay, most people you think maybe in Chi in China, because you know, uh, Dubai, they have a lot of like uh, amazing stuff. For example, the biggest mall in the world, which is Dubai Mall, and you can see like everywhere a lot of Chinese here. And in the luxury shops, maybe you think, oh, okay, it's too expensive to buy. But you always can find Chinese people there, okay? And there's a lot of rich Chinese there. They're, they're willing to buy the fashion stuff, for example, Gucci shoes and Chanel. By the way, I love them too, okay? And I would imagine like someday, um, I can... Uh, You're good. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do you think there, uh, I don't know. Actually, I'm a uh, fashion follower as well, but I'm not that addicted to that. And I'm not, I'm not that agree with them. They're like, uh, they, they're falling in love with this kind of fashion stuff, but everyone has their own choice. We, we can't say you're doing something wrong or I'm doing something right. And if you have that money and you want to buy something you like, it's your choice. I respect that. And for me, I want to like work hard and for, for girls, they love, you know, shiny bags and uh, the beautiful clothes. And for, in my opinion, I don't think they did anything wrong, but maybe if this is just a lifestyle they choose and everyone has the right to choose the lifestyle they want. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just uh, one, one second, Omar. Uh, uh, this could, topic actually could have been a very funny topic. There was an opportunity here to turn this topic into a funny topic. You know, fashion victims I have known, right? I mean, you could just look down at your shoes and say, wow, because you were wearing Adidas, right? Adidas? My, my brand name. Oh, my shirt. You, could, you know, you could turn it into a, a funny topic. It depends on how creative you can be. Am I a victim? Okay. All right. Let's go to speaker number nine. Uh, one minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots, please. One minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots, please. May I call on stage speaker number nine? Speaker number nine, Omer Riaz, how negative thinking can help develop you as a person. Speaker number nine, Omar Riaz, how negative thinking can help develop you as a person. When you talk. When you talk. Do I look like a very confident speaker? Do you see any sign of nervousness on my face? No. Well, 12 years ago, a teacher called my parents to complain that your son is very talkative. These few words were enough to spark the anger of my very serious father who went home and told me, Look son, I have lost all the interest in you. I have lost all the hopes in you. So what you can do is go become an actor. Speak. Speak in class as much as you can. Go. I, I don't care about you. Know? what you're gonna do in classes and so on. But these few words struck me so badly that I took them very seriously. I started building upon on the skill of talking a lot. I participated in debates, speech, allocution competitions. Went on to participate in international forums, leadership forums, and here today, in 2017, I own a company of my own 
where I'm a training consultant for the young college students, where I give training on leadership. Well, what I want to tell you out of this short story is that life, like we have started to portray using a few words that are out there on the internet, the empty platitudes, life is not like a sunshine or rainbows, you must be working hard, you know, cheerleading, 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 you can do things. Well, 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 let's take a break from all of these things. I mean, yes, positivity is a good thing, but we have lost the balance between the negatives and the positives because we are living on planet Earth. Planet Earth. You all came to the university, right? Did anyone tell you the university is going to be an easy experience? No. Did they tell you that it's going to be you know what? A breeze? Yeah. But then why do we fake to ourselves the mere act of cheerleading will get us through all this? No. Come to engineering and you will get to know how much cheerleading is going to help you. I'm about to graduate in three weeks from now. And guess what? Despite having a small training consultancy company, I think I need to have a job in order to support myself financially and my family. So before I graduate, I thought I would secure a job. Failure can be a very painful moment, right? Yes. But <clears throat> they say that we have to fail in order to succeed. But why don't we keep trying? A typical platitude will come in our mind, yes, yes, keep going, keep going. But this doesn't work. When the failure is painful, we can't just keep going. And that happened with me. Failure after failure. I apply for a job, rejected. Apply for a job, rejected. Apply for a job, rejected. So what I started doing is, the technique I've started to apply right now in order to keep applying so that statistically I will end up getting a job is to start thinking that I'm not good enough. Yes, I do have excellent achievements throughout the university. I have great portfolio and I mean it when I say that to myself. But yes, I'm not good enough. So that when I apply and I get rejected, the moment of rejection is not painful. And I just sit down and I start applying a game. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all take out some time out of our everyday life away from the nebulous cloud of positivity and come back to the reality and think that are we good enough in order to keep going into an unknown arena while not being prepared for it? Thank you. You don't leave the stage until the stage master approaches you. That's a taboo. Never leave the stage until the, tab the stage master comes up on stage. A minute of silence.